What's up guys, welcome to another episode of the NBA Fantasy Lounge and today we're going to be talking about second half breakout players from the previous NBA season which was the 2021-2022 season. Um, now the reason I think this will be a really good podcast is that I always find that um, there's a bunch of players that generally do well um, in the post all-star break, um, so the second half of the season due to a number of reasons. One, they get familiar with the team or two, most likely they get traded as well and I find that those things generally tend to carry on to the next season in a lot of the cases. So I actually want to do a video today on some of those players, which I think will have great, more consistent seasons this year uh, because of the fact that they had that really great sort of post All-Star break last year. So we'll get right into it. And the first player, uh, player is Tyrese Halliburton. Now, Tyrese Halliburton had, I mean, he's a crazy player. Everyone was waiting for him to break out of Sacramento, either with De'Aaron Fox getting traded or him getting traded. And he actually got traded, which is awesome because um, now he really has the keys to the car in Indiana. Um, there's no other point guard there that's definitely going to take his place. He's pretty much going to get all the minutes uh, in the world as well. And look, he's going to be on a team that's probably going to lose a lot of games this year, um, especially now that they're probably going to trade Miles Turner, I'm assuming. But uh, I think that he's going to just have, uh, you know, the keys to the car, as I said, it's going to be a really standout season. So if we look at the stats, um, pre-All-Star, he averaged pretty good stats, in my opinion, 14 points, 7 assists. Um, and about two threes a game, pretty decent field goal percentage. Um, and even Turner was once about 2.25. And that was with De'Aaron Fox. And he was basically sort of playing like a hybrid role. I know he was, um, De'Aaron Fox is injured a bit as well, but when he got post, uh, when he got traded, sorry, post All-Star, as you can tell, he went just crazy. I mean, 17 points a game, so he up to about like three. His assists went up two assists a game. His turnovers, unfortunately, obviously went up, but that's due to a higher usage. And uh, steals sort of about the same, went up a bit. Three pointers about the same, but his field goal percentage went up a lot, which means he's, he's not even just like, you know, chucking up shots. He's actually a good player, wants to win, and actually knows how to play and, and be a team player as well and, and really drive that point guard role, which is awesome. So I reckon he's easily going to get the same stats, if not more, maybe even looking at maybe like 18, 19 points a game, 10 assists a game, or close to it. And uh, if you look at his true shooting percentage, that went up, you know, about 40 you know, 0.4%, which is really good as well. Um, usage went about the same as well. Obviously now that it's just getting, uh, you know, slightly more minutes as well. And he'll probably get to leave a little bit more. On top of that, I can see easily his stats um, improving. He'll be, he'll be an awesome fantasy player this year. I reckon he's got to go at least uh, sort of late second round. Um, third round will be the latest you get him. Uh, if he drops any further than that, then, you know, you're really in a, rook a rookie league, I reckon. So um, definitely look out for Tyrus Halliburton, and uh, I think he'll have an awesome season this year due to the fact that he's you know got the keys to the car, um, had a great standout second half season last year. Next up we have Jalen Green. Now Jalen Green, second pick in the last NBA draft, and you know people were highly touted. Sort of he was highly touted, and people were pretty high on him, and then he sort of had that really horrible first half of the year and he was just forgotten. I mean, he was on the waiver wire and picked up and dropped about a million times for my leagues anyway. I know I picked him up and dropped him a fair few times um, purely because he's a low cap player. He only really contributes in threes um, points and that's about it. He doesn't really get steals, doesn't get rebounds, doesn't get assists and he doesn't really shoot too many free throws either even though he's a decent free throw shooter. So he doesn't really contribute much. However, one thing I want to point out is that um, if we look at his postseason stats, he, he jumped up from 15 points a game nearly to 22 points a game. Now that's quite a big jump in the second half of the season. Yes, he only played 24 games and it might have been an outlier, but I don't think it was. I think it was, um, you know, just him getting more comfortable with the team and sort of just relaxing a bit. I think he put a bit of pressure on himself coming into the league and sort of saying he had a chip on his shoulder because he wasn't selected number one. Uh, I don't know. I think he's, I think he's um, you know, going to let all that go and probably do a bit better this year as well. So. Um, the thing I want to point out as well is his true shooting percentage. That went up from 51% to about 59%. Like that is a huge jump. And it seems like an anomaly, um, but I mean, 24 games is a fairly big sample size for your true shooting percentage as well. So, I mean, I don't know if he's going to be 59% this, this year or all year, but that's pretty good true shooting percentage. I think that he's probably going to average at least 20 points a game. But um, And even that's a big call. I mean, for a rookie to average 20 points a game in his sophomore year, well, he won't be a rookie, but you know, in his sophomore year, that's pretty big. I mean, it reminds me sort of like Mallow in that sense, but he's just a really good scorer and he's um, just got you know a, a lot of sort of skills in terms of being a scorer as well. He's not as big a body and definitely not the rebounder that Mallow was, but um, I think that he could easily get around 18, 19 a game on pretty decent um, stats. His field goal percentage as well was 47 and nearly 48% in the second half of the season. I don't think he'll repeat that, but maybe we're looking at 44% um, over the year, which is really good because he was not, not even serviceable. He was 37, I can see 39% um, pre-All-Star, but he was horrible. I mean, he I remember he was 
trending at like 35 or 34 for a long time as well. So look after Jalen Green. I think as a pure scorer and uh, sorry, as a low cap player and just pretty much a scorer, he's probably going to drop quite far in the draft because obviously you can always pick up scoring off the waiver wire. Um, but I think he's going to be pretty decent this year. And they didn't really add too much. They got rid of John Wall, who didn't play anyway. But I mean, Jabari Smith is not really going to take his position or many shots off him. Kevin Porter Jr., he's erratic, who knows what he'll do. But Jalen Green, I think, will be there and uh, he will take a lot more shots this year, which is crazy because he's already taken 17 in the post all stuff from the stats. Um, and I think he's just going to have a, a, a much more consistent season um, off the, um, uh, as a sophomore than a rookie. So. Uh, yeah, definitely look after him. Uh, see if you can snag him sort of around nine, around ten, maybe at, at around there. Um, but again, just remember he's a pure scorer. But I think definitely someone to look out for um, purely because of that second half to last season that he had. Now we're going to go to from one rookie to another rookie. So Jalen Green, second pick in the draft last year. Kate Cunningham, first pick in the draft last year. Now um, I picked him up last year. I think about run eight or run nine. I can't remember now, but. Man, I was pretty happy to have him. Um, if you look at his stats here, um, 20 games he played in the second half of the season. His minutes was up, uh, his points was up by about six. So he went from 15 to oh, about 16 points a game to 21 points a game. His rebounds uh, pretty much stayed the same by six. His assists went up a little bit from five to six and a half, which is pretty decent as well. And um, obviously he got more comfortable in the team. He had a bit of a slow start as well, but he was nowhere near as bad as Jalen Green. He was still always sort of contributing fantasy-wise. I think he was awesome this year. His three pointers took a drop. Uh, he definitely he took less threes as well. I, I don't know what's going on with that. I could probably see him maybe averaging 1.5 this year. He's not a big three point shooter, and I think he has a lot to improve there. But his field goal percentage jumped up a lot, which was a huge burden at the start. The guy was just a turnover machine and a field goal uh, percentage killer. So I think if you can pick him up sort of late as well, you get um, a, a lot of good value. Is 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 well as long as you're punting either turnovers or. Uh, potentially field goal. So I can see he shot 46% here and he took 18 shots a game. I don't know if he's going to take that many shots this year. I think he's going to be revert a little bit back on that, maybe about 16 or 15 points, uh, 15 shots a game. Um, but I think his assists will sort of go up a bit. His turnovers will still be super high. He's, he's still young. Um, and he's going to be that sort of triple-double threat, uh, you know, every couple of games or so. So I think it's going to be great. Just look out again for those field goal and turnover. But I think outside that, he's going to have a really good season. Um, and he's going to continue to prove he's a smart player, young player. He's got, again, got the keys to the car sort of thing like um, uh, the Detroit coach. Oh, I forgot his name now. Um, Dwayne Casey, that's right, yeah. Uh, Kate, uh, he's basically said, you know, Cade's, you know, are going to be our future sort of thing. So, and their future, their picks as well, Ivy and, and Duran, I think his name is, um, Duran, I'm not sure, but they're not going to really impact him too much, but, you know, and Jeremiah Grant's gone as well. Not that he took that many shots anymore, but, you know, he's, he's really going to, uh, have a lot of usage. His usage went up from 26 to 30 last year and his true shooting also went up as well. So I think he's definitely going to be a, a better consistent player this year, looking around 18 points a game, 17 points a game, but you know, five, six uh, rebounds, and then you've got that six to seven assists a game and, um, you know, steals as well. So definitely look up for him. I think he's going to be awesome this year. All right, so we've got Wendell Carter Jr. now. Now, Wendell Carter Jr. was, uh, you know, the guy that everyone thought Draymond, he would be Draymond Green when he was back in Chicago and he didn't make it. But then he finally got traded to Orlando and he just busted out. Like, I mean, the guy just had a really good season all up. So as we can see here, um, he had a small sample size post All-Star, but what I want to point out is that he is, he is, even though it's 11 games, he definitely got a lot more usage, um, which you can see as well, he would jump from 20 to 24. And that's because Mo Bamba, I think was either injured or just not playing as much anymore. Mo Bamba sort of didn't fall out of the rotation, but he definitely dropped a lot of minutes as well. And he was, Wendell Carter was just the only real big that they had um, up front as well, uh, because they had like Robin Lopez and Mo Wagner and a couple other guys. They didn't, they don't really believe in, they just sort of, got them there in case of injuries and stuff. So in my opinion, Orlando is a bit of a mess at the moment. Uh, not that they really weren't a mess since the Dwight Howard days. They've pretty much always been a mess. But um, we look at his stats here, you know, uh, 11 and a half rebounds a game post All-Star. So that jumped up one and a half. He jumped from 14 points to nearly 20 points a game. That's a huge jump. I know it's 11 um, games, so that is a huge jump, especially for a guy that's not their number one go-to. Cole Anthony and Jalen Suggs pretty much take all their shots. Um, his blocks went down a little bit. Steals went down a little bit. Um, his three pointers uh, went well, there aren't one, so they didn't really improve. But his field goal percentage jumped huge I mean, 50% to 59%. Something really happened. I don't really know what it was. I don't follow Orlando too closely, but and I didn't have him last year on my team either. But 
he's obviously just a bit more comfortable with the team. And I think he also got more of that role in the team. They, they wanted him to, to do a bit better um, as well and be more of a focal point in the offense. So I think he's going to have another great season this year, barring injury. He's a little bit injury prone. Um, but, you know, I, uh, I always think that bigs are a rarity. So I think he's going to be probably picked in, in probably the third or fourth round, maybe the fourth round, third, maybe seems a little bit earlier. I can't really tell. Um, but definitely look out for him, and I think that he's going to have a really good season this year. They did re-sign Mo Bamba um, to, I think it was like two years, it was a smallish deal, but I don't think that, I mean, if they, they won't benefit. Last year was Mo's year. If he didn't get all the minutes in the world last year, I don't know why they re-signed him, in my opinion. <laughs> I think he's going to have a similar year this year where he has some games where he plays long stretches and other games where he just barely plays at all. So uh, I think Wendell Carter doesn't really have much, um, much competition at the center position, power forward position. Um, well, it's really center position, and he sometimes plays PF, but uh, and I think he's going to be awesome again this year and probably average uh, for maybe about 20 points. We're moving for like 17 points a game, uh, 11 and a half rebounds a game, and um, you know, it's going to be a bit of a threat everywhere else and doesn't really hurt you too much. Low turnovers, um, well, I can see 2.55, but overall, you know, you, you probably will reduce that. That's not a career type thing, so definitely look up for Wendell Carter Jr., especially as centers are more rare. Talking about from one center to another center, we're going to from Wendell Carter Jr. to Jalen Smith. Jalen Smith was another um, awesome pickup, I reckon, for Indiana, um, in addition to um, to Halliburton. And if we look at his stats, uh, he actually got some pretty decent minutes due to the fact that they had a bit of a uh, injury pile up uh, in in Indiana. So he went from six points a game uh, pre All Star to 13.7 post the trade. Um, so it's nearly 14 points a game, nearly eight boards a game. Uh, and if his blocks, you know, nearly one block a game. And the best part about him that is really underrated is he shoots threes. I mean, 1.43 again, that's pretty good. Um, and he, shoot, he shoots at a good clip too. We look at not the three-pointer, but the field goal percentage. It doesn't really affect too much. He's still shooting 52% uh, on that's on 25 minutes. So um, I reckon this guy's going to be a, a real bargain um, if Miles Turner gets traded, which is, I don't even think that's a if. I think it's just a win at this point. But basically, I reckon that um, you know, he's going to explode once uh, Miles Turner gets traded. The only other guys, the only other problems with Jalen Smith at the moment is that um, there's a bit of a logjam in Indiana with center and PF position. So he does play sort of, I mean, he's like a power forward, but he does play center. It's really typical, I guess, for them to lock him down in a particular role. But they've got Isaiah Jackson, Jackson. they've got uh, Goga Vidatse, they also play O'Shea Brissett. Um, at the PF spot, and uh, there may be some one other person as well, but they've got a bit of a logjam, and that's not even including Miles Turner. So I reckon Miles Turner's going to start the season. He'll eventually get traded, but up until that point, um, so Jalen Smith will sort of tread water, get that sort of like low 20 minutes, and then once turn is gone, I think uh, Jalen Smith's going to carve out that main role in that team. I think the only other person that they're higher on, or maybe the same as Jalen Smith in that team, is Isaiah Jackson. And, you know, he's really young and raw, and I think that they both bring different things to the table, but I think that if Miles Turner gets traded, he'll easily get 25 minutes a game, um, maybe even some, maybe even a little bit more as well. And I think, again, for a big that shoots threes, um, doesn't really hurt you in turnovers, gets a few blocks and, you know, shoots a decent field goal percentage. How does that hurt you? If you can pick him up like sort of round 10, round 11, and just hold him for the season, I think you won't really go wrong. It's pretty low risk, high sort of medium reward, I'd say. Um, and then on top of that, you know, if he, uh, if the other players get injured um, or he somehow gets traded again, which I don't think so, Indiana were pretty high on, on him um, from memory, uh, you know, then he's going to really explode. He's a minute sort of guy, but he's, per his usage, he, he really gets up as well. So um, look look for him definitely in, in the late runs. Maybe run tens a little bit early or maybe not. I can't really tell at this stage. I've got to do my own draft rankings um, to tell that, but I definitely think that you guys should be, um, should be looking out for him. I think he's going to be awesome this year as well. So we'll continue on and um, we have uh, Anthony Simons. Now Anthony Simons, uh, if you look here as well, he was really awesome once Lil Lillard went down. So that's pretty much January onwards. So before that, he was sort of playing a dual role with Lillard, but once Lillard went down, he averaged about, as you can see, 23 points, 23 and 20 goals, about 23 points a game and about five to five and a half assists a game. So that's awesome. Now just remember that Lillard is there this year um, and they're also, also got Jeremiah Grant as well, which is not really a ball handler, but Obviously, there's just a few more shots going to be taken. They also have Josh Smith, Winslow, and a few other guys that they picked up in trades that they're probably going to want to shoot a little bit more in addition to Lillard. So I think he'll drop down a little bit. But the thing you got to remember is that they paid this guy the bag. So four years, $100 million. Well, I don't know if it's a bag anymore after what Beal got. Um, but four years, $100 million is a pretty big investment. And Chauncey Phillips is really high in this guy. I've seen heaps of quotes from Phillips talking up Simons. Um, I think barring... Um, Barring Lillard just going crazy or a trade or them competing for a, for a playoff position, which I don't think they will. I think that 
you know, they're basically not not going to compete um, for a player position this year either. Uh, unless they pull off a big trade, he's going to have another like sort of like 18, 19 points a game, five assists a game type season, and he's going to do it for the whole season. The thing about him as well, you got to remember, is that his threes are crazy. He averaged when he was down, he's averaging four and a half, I think. I mean, if you look at these, he's at 4.5, 4, and then 6. It's a fairly low sample set. It's only 27 after we got 27 games after we got injured, but that's crazy. I mean, four threes a game, you can't really find that too much as well. So. Um, turnover's not too bad. Oh, actually, no, looking at him, he did, he does get a bit bad. But once the Lillard's there, I think that will reduce a little bit because his primary ball handle will go down and become more of a shooter or a scorer. Um, and he doesn't really help me in that category, but, but you know, that's what you're getting for. Three, scoring, um, and uh, potentially, well, that's about it. Even free throws, he doesn't attempt too much. But again, the threes is the main thing uh, if he's going to be shooting that many. Um, as we can see as well, his true shooting percentage went up quite a bit in the second half. So the bottom three indicators is 62%, 58%, and 65%. They're all the true shooting figures for when Lulu was out. That's crazy. I mean, that's really, really high. And um, I think that he's going to um, continue on that ride. Uh, even with Lulu, there's going to be probably even better looks as well. I think that he's finally um, figured his role out there. And I think that they've actually figured out a role for him as well. Now that McCullum's gone. So that's another big thing as well to remember. And the last guy we have today is Christoph Porzingis. Now, Porzingis, uh, the guy you love, the guy you hate. Um, every single season is the same. Whoever drafts him loves him for a bit, then hates him, then loves him for a bit, then hates him. The thing has become a bit more hate now than love because he just always gets injured and can't stand the court. But if you pick him up, just remember he's still going to be really rare. A, a center that shoots a fair amount of threes, um, rebounds well, um, actually gets block, you know, decent amount of block shots, and um, pretty good scorer as well. So. Pre and post, the post is the post trade, the post all-star when he got traded to um, Washington. And he played there when really there wasn't many other people. So Dinwiddie was, uh, not Dinwiddie, um, Beal was uh, injured for that season and Kuzma was also gone as well. So they didn't really have anyone. I mean, they had KCP, um, Denny Abdia and uh, Chris, uh, Kispert pretty much taking all their shots. So he did shoot a little bit more. So I can see that he's averaged about 22 points a game. But if you look at it as well, his usage went up a little bit, but his true shooting percentage also went up a little bit as well. And that's on pretty much the same amount of shots. So I would say to you guys that, and let me know what you think, but I would say to you guys, even with Bill there and Kuzma back, I think his shots will drop a little bit, but I think he's still gonna average around that 19 points a game. I think the fact that he was able to score 22 points on the same amount of shots he took in Dallas, that's pretty impressive. I think that they want to sort of work him into that team and really give him a shot as well. Um, I think the only thing that's going to stop him is, is stop him is himself uh, due to A, he's just sometimes he just gets into ruts and he I think it gets into his head a little bit. He's, a, he's an amazing player, honestly. I think he's really still sort of underrated in his skill set. But number two, the thing that really brings him down is injuries. And you never know, some guys just finally figure out a way to not get injured. Maybe this is going to be his year. He still is young. I think he's only like 26 years old. So he's still fairly young. He's got youth on his side. So he didn't keep his injuries up uh, and you can get him pretty late, maybe like round five or round six, I'd say. That's a steal because again, centers are rare and anyone who shoots um, threes at center as well as blocks um, and rebounds, that's you, you're not going to find that um, a lot. So I think if you can pick him up late, he's going to be awesome. I think that he's going to be in a bigger role. The, re the thing to remember as well is that in Dallas, he wasn't, he always had a bit of an issue. There was always a lot of rooms between him not liking his role, not liking being sort of the second to um, to uh, Doncic, which is crazy because clearly Doncic is better. And third, I think he just was disgruntled there um, after the whole New York trade as well. I think they were sort of expecting more from him. He was expecting different things from them. And I think that he may have dropped all those expectations and he's just going to come and play ball now in Washington. So um, this is probably his final chance. I think if he doesn't really either improve his health or you know gets less injured or he doesn't become a bit more consistent this year, I think that's probably it for him. I can't really see him doing any any better any other team because he's always had some excuse in New York it was sort of poor coaching and a poor team around in Dallas he was just disgruntled they were disgruntled him etc so I think Washington this is his last spot if he doesn't get it in this year then I don't know what to say about the guy but definitely um again the fact that he's a center um I understand he's injury prone um look to pick him up maybe around six is a bit late I don't think he's gonna drop maybe he'll probably picked up around from probably four five would be the latest I think three is a bit of a reach just injuries but you know it, it really depends on, on on your build as well so definitely look up for him but he's going to be an awesome player and let me know what you think about all these guys as well whether you think that they're going to continue on or whether there's anyone else that you think that i've missed there was a few other guys that i would say like uh drew eubanks and uh, jose Alvarado and herbert jones like they had pretty good post all-star breaks but i don't know how much they're going to continue at this year especially like someone like drew eubanks had a really good year 
uh, post all stuff, but that was due to the fact that they were just playing like their subs. Um, their entire team was their bench, and he was, you know, Nurkic was injured, um, so I don't know how many more minutes, you know, he's going to get this year. Nurkic actually re-signed four years, 70 million, but keep an eye on Drew Eubanks. Um, I don't think they have many other centers, um, and, and Nurkic always gets injured, uh, so I, I always want to pick him, but I just can't because he always just gets injured. Last year, he was not too bad. He actually played the majority of the season and got injured towards the end, but yeah, I can't trust these in injury pro players anymore. They just burn me every season. I feel like it, it just gets worse all the time as well. So but let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know whether these tips helped you at all. Let me know um, whether there's any players missing or, yes, and again, and just uh, let me know if you have any suggestions on other videos as well. I've been playing NBA Fantasy for, for a long time now, and these are all the things that I think that are really important to me when I pick a team, so that's why I'm sharing them with you. Uh, you guys can have other stuff as well, so I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to do a video as well, but let me know. Leave a comment in the, in the, um, in the comment section if you have any suggestions, and if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up as well. Um, but I will see you in the next video, guys. We've got plenty more ideas, as I said. We'll probably have one coming up next week, and I'll see you in the next one. So take care. See you guys.